Good afternoon, everybody. Buenas tardes. My name is Lori Reese. I'm the children's librarian at the Felipe de Neve branch of Los Angeles Public Library, and I welcome you to the fourth and final, for now, in our series of climate reality story times I've been doing as part of Los Angeles Public Library's Neighborhood Science Initiative. Today, I'd like to tie together concepts introduced in the previous sessions by reviewing books shared and leading up to, to, um, to a discussion of today's theme, Observe One Story Time series four weeks ago in celebration of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. That day, we read two books, Make the Earth Your Companion and Mama, Look. During the second session, we talked about animals and habitat loss in Where's the Elephant and Sea Bear. We looked at species that are endangered in Gone Wild, an endangered species alphabet, and looked at a few wonderful photographs showing that human babies have lots in common with lots of other animal babies in a baby like you. At last week's third session, we talked about the wondrous diversity of life forms on Earth and how each life contributes to the survival of all. We read One Happy Tiger. We looked at the, at the uh, dazzling array of beetles in A Beetle is Shy. And in Carl and the Meaning of Life, an earthworm by the name of Carl helped us see that everything in life is connected. And under the same sky, we saw that all plants and animals and insects do live together under the same sky. Our contemplation of the beauty of our magnificent earth continues. I'd like to read The Pout Pout Fish Cleans Up the Ocean, written by Deborah Deason, illustrated by Dan Hanna, and published by Farrar Strauss Giroux. The Pout Pout Fish Cleans Up the Ocean. You know what? Excuse me one moment. Let me get these. There we go. The pout pout fish cleans up the ocean. The ocean is amazing. Mr. Fish's grin was wide. The beautiful surroundings left him wonderstruck inside. His head was full of happy and his heart was full of awe, but his smile sank away when he turned around and saw a big, big mess. Whatever could it be? But he couldn't really tell. So we talked with a friend who had noticed it as well. There's a problem that needs solving and I don't know what to do, but I'm going to find some answers. Would you like to join me too? Absolutely, said Miss Shimmer as she grabbed a few supplies. They travel to the mystery mess and see with their own eyes. Swimming off, they were enchanted by the ocean big and bright, but looming in the distance was that dark, dismal sight. A big, big mess. What's it made of, they both wondered, and they pondered this out loud. Around the mothers gathered in a small but growing crowd. There is a problem that needs solving, and we don't know what to do. But we're going to find some answers. Would you like to join us too? Count us in, said Mr. Seahorse, and he powered up his rig. Enthusiasm bubbled. Yes, the group was getting big. They jetted through the ocean in a peaceful sort of bliss, but the thing that stretched before them was impossible to miss. 
a big, big mess. Who will fix it? Fish were asking, hoping someone else would know. There was lots of conversation as they traveled with the flow. There's a problem that needs solving and we don't know what to do, but we're going to find some answers. Would you like to join us too? All is one, said Mrs. Squid as she swished away some junk. The group continued forward toward the nearing pile of gunk. They reached the mystery mess. They took measurements and samples. They made notes and they did research. They found similar examples. When everyone was finished, they assembled to discuss. They came to one conclusion. The problem is us. We made the big, big mess. They froze in disbelief. Then they all began to shout, feeling troubled and uneasy, and some began to pout. Were they stuck with this forever? Would it worsen? Would it grow? Mr. Fish was worried too, but there's one thing that I know. It's awful that we caused it, but this bad news can be good for it means that we can solve it if we all agree we should. Silence filled the ocean. Their future was at stake. It was a moment of decision, but which one would they make? A big, big yes! We can do it, they exclaimed positively, yes and yup. So they all pitched in together and they cleaned the ocean up. They gathered up the garbage with the help of everyone. They worked hard to fix and remedy the damage that they'd done. Then they talked about new habits, how to travel with less trace and reduce their use of plastic and put trash into its right place. Problems have solutions, so we learn what we can do. Together, we're the answer. Would you like to join us too? Lots to talk about in this book. Our actions do have consequences, sometimes good, sometimes bad. We are all in show care and concern. We can confront problems and create solutions. We can cooperate and contribute. We must have conversations we can no longer wait to have. We must form communities of change. Now, let's become owls. Let's become owls. The mascot for this series of climate reality story times has been the owl. And each letter that spells owl gives us the theme for today's program. Let me just move over just a little bit. The theme for today's program. So we have the letter O, which stands for observe, to notice, to pay special attention to. The W stands, the W stands for wonder, to feel amazement, to have curiosity or doubt. And the L, the L stands for learn, to gain knowledge of one wonderful bird and three glorious concepts. When we observe, wonder, and learn, we take an adventure, just like going to a place we've never been before, or like walking through the woods with a friend, which environmentalist Rachel Carson writes is um, an expedition of exciting discovery. She goes on to write, she goes on to write in her sense of wonder um, about roaming through the lonely spaces of the universe. Drink in the beauty, think and wonder at the meaning of what you see. 
Now is the time to be an owl. Speaking of time, speaking of time, looking at the words that have brought us together for these four Wednesday afternoons, climate reality, story, time, story, time. Now is the time to observe the reality of the climate around you. What do you notice? What do you feel? What questions and worries do you have? What do you want to learn? Each of us is living through the story of a world that is changing all around us. And we have books. I show some books. There are many, many, many more books to read. We'll get to those in just a few minutes. But to draw this climate reality story time series to a temporary close, I'd like to read Daniel finds a poem. This book is written and illustrated by Misha Archer and published by Nancy Paulson Books. Before opening the book, I think we see Owl in action. Look at Daniel's face. He's observing, he's wondering, and I think he wants to learn something. Daniel finds a poem. And now on the title page thread, he's being an owl again, this time with a cricket. Daniel knows all the rocks, trees, and animals in the park. On Monday morning, Daniel sees something new on the park gate. A sign reads, Poetry in the Park, Sunday at 6 o'clock. What is poetry? Daniel says. He looks up in surprise when he hears spiders say, To me, poetry is when morning dew glistens. On Tuesday, Daniel climbs the old oak tree. He sees squirrel. Squirrel, do you know what poetry is? Poetry is when crisp leaves crunch, squirrel tells him. On Wednesday, Daniel calls into Chipmunk's hole. Chipmunk, can you tell me what poetry is? Poetry, hmm. Poetry is a home with many windows in an old stone wall. On Thursday, Daniel makes a boat with a leaf for a sail and watches the wind carry it across the pond. He calls quietly to Frog. Excuse me, Frog, what is poetry? Poetry, says Frog, is a cool pool to dive into. On Friday, Daniel parts the cattails and finds Turtle. Hello, Turtle. I have a question. Do you know what poetry is? I think poetry is sun-warmed sand, Turtle says. On Saturday afternoon, Daniel finds Cricket in the shade of the slide. When the shadows are long, Cricket fills the air with music. Is this poetry to you, Cricket? Singing at twilight when the day is done? Indeed it is, Daniel. That night, moonlight fills Daniel's room. He hears a whoo. Leaning from his window, he calls to Owl. Owl, 
What is poetry? Ooh, poetry. Poetry is bright stars in the branches, moonlight on the grass, and silent wings to take me wherever I go. Good night, dear Daniel, she whispers, and flies off into the night. On Sunday, the sun wakes Daniel up. He is happy when he remembers that it's Sunday. Today is poetry in the park, says Daniel, and I have a poem. Morning dew glistens. Crisp leaves crunch. There's a home with many windows in the, coal, in the old stone wall, cool pools to dive into, sun-warmed sand to lie in. Singing at twilight when the day is done, bright stars in the branches, moonlight on the grass, and silent wings to take me wherever I want to go. On the way home, Daniel stops to watch the sunset sky reflecting in the pond. That looks like poetry to me. To me too, says Dragonfly. So, thank you all for spending this Wednesday afternoon and the previous three Wednesday afternoons as we spent a bit of time, a bit of time thinking about some very complex issues dealing with the reality of our climate. Um, this particular session will be available for 24 hours on the Felipe de Neve Instagram page. And I will be back doing other climate related programs. Um, so please do stay tuned. One that is going that is coming up at some point will involve an interview with the folks at Tree People. We must talk about trees. Now, until we all meet again, there are books to read. The entire catalog of Los Angeles Public Library's collection is available online with your library card. You can actually read and listen to books through your computer or other device. And there are many. I'm awfully sorry. We have biographies of famous scientists. I am so sorry. It's an awful noise. Plastics. And one here is for Jane Goodall, me, Jane. If you can go to lapl.org to the kids page and then to Overdrive, go to BookFlix and watch, watch the video telling of this book. So I'm going to put our owl up here to guide us in wisdom. Thank you again for spending time with me this Wednesday afternoon. Take good care. Be safe. See you soon. Bye-bye.